Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, really good to be here, seeing everybody and being in God's house. Uh, this morning, I wore this jersey to remind myself and us that we're we're on a team. We have a, a great leader, a great God, a great Savior. Um, we've come to worship our Lord and praise Him. Uh, we're huddled together. He delivers his word. Sometimes we fumble it, but he always comes through. He always picks us back up. He has many, uh, he's done many, many things. All provisions are through Christ. Um, we put on the armor of God and we come to hear the anointed word from Jesus this morning that protects us, covers us, blesses us from the winds and the storms and the waves of what the world is throwing. His blessings always cover us. He is our anchor, he's our sure hold. The victory of the battle is done. And uh, our roots are growing deeper. We were listening to some things about the storms of life and how storms and trees, it can it cause the, the, the roots to grow deeper as the most times that the trees get growth is when storms come about. And uh, oftentimes when we go through life storms and difficulties and situations, we're better for it, we may not realize it, but we're, we're thankful for, for these storms of life sometimes. And a lot of the times the storms are, are manufactured, sometimes they're false storms, imagined storms, um, a lot of things in the media and we all hear, but we have our, a great God who these are quite great times. They have things about the coronavirus, yes. <coughs> And uh, black lives matter, yes. All lives matter. We're all creating God's image, and it's a great time to share Christ's word, to share his love, to know that he's with us, never leave us, but forsake us. And we're just passing through, and these are great days to share his word, the life of Jesus, and just to be able to minister to others, to be an encouragement, to laugh, to cry, to pray, to listen, to share to gather together to hear the anointed word from pastors and teachers who uh, who are who are doing amazing work. Their, their sacrifice does not go not noticed. And I think we all can appreciate our pastors and our leaders and our worship leaders and our friends and loved ones in the body of Christ who want to share this love to others, the truth of God, and in whatever way that we can, but it's through only through the word. And the word is on us, in us, and it's a great treasure. And it's being developed each day, morning by morning, day by day, as we think on his word. And we lift it up and just don't, each moment of the day, there's different things that go about, but they're all planned. They're all a purpose. And even that we, that things are going through today, there's a, there's a plan and purpose for all of these things. And so I think it's been great times for the church, for the body of Christ, mm -hmm. for leaders, for ministers, for preachers for prayer, for mothers and fathers, for housewives, for <clears throat> everybody. I think these are great, great times. Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your blessings, your covering, your the cross, the resurrection, your great love, grace, mercy, all things, your holy word, Father God, your holy. And we get to share your glory with you now, Father God. Your glory is shed abroad I think that those that have storms will never see a, a sunset differently or by a beach differently because you're in it. You're involved in our lives so deeply and you care so much about the little things, the big things. You're here, Father God. So speak to us deeply, Father God, as you always have and do. Birth in us action, Father God, and renew our minds this morning in Jesus' name. Good morning. Good morning. 
it's uh, been a crazy week. The difficulties that are going on in our world, the cities, with people's lives and situations. Um, just uh, announcements before we get in this Wednesday, 7 o'clock, and then Thursday, uh, 7 o'clock, and then Saturday morning, uh, 10 o'clock. And uh, yesterday's uh, 10 o'clock um, message is yesterday in class, which was amazing. Yeah. Was that good? I mean, and I've gone through this five times, six, more than that, yeah. you know, and um, just, just powerful and the interaction and to be able to talk. You know, people don't talk no more. It's very s surface. It's very surface, you know. And, and I think that's a part of the world system anyway. Even the isolation of people is, is demonic. We're meant for each other. Yes. Okay. All of us, yes. we're meant for each other. Yes. So... Um, but look how quick they can isolate you. Not saying it's not serious. It's not what I'm saying at all. It's through agendas. People can be isolated like that. You know, so just a thought. We are covered by the blood of Christ. Amen. Preach, sister. Come on. <laughs> um, so, Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Hey, everybody on Facebook. Good morning. Good and morning. Instagram. And Instagram. Wow. What platforms we have. And the and mixer. mixer. Wow. And our website. And our and website. website. <laughs> and why. And why. Yes. 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 <laughs> Listen, if you're crazy enough, come live. <laughs> Come on. It's got to take a special crazy <laughs> person. We're peculiar people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> uh, okay, let's uh, let's do this and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time um, where we can gather around the Word of God and um, knowing that our Heavenly Father wants to speak to us, um, speak to the innermost parts of our heart, not outer ears, not surface, but deep, deep into the hearts of your people where you say, dry bones live. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I don't know where I'm going to be going with this. I'm just going with this. Okay. Um, I watched. Um, I watched the death of uh, Mr. Floyd, and um, I don't know one person who uh, disagrees with the arrest and what's, you know, of, of these officers and the force and the ungodly, unruly actions that took place. And, and, um, and it's real, real sad. And if you watch it, it'll break your heart. It really, it really will mess you up. Um, and, and we know that there are problems and we know that there are major issues. We know this. Um, other things that are happening, though, that are not being reported are just as evil. Make note of that. Like the 31-year-old black officer woman who was sitting in her car and somebody came and just blew her right away. Do you hear that? No, you don't hear. So it matters to the extent of the agenda that they want to push. And evil, we don't solve evil with evil, you know. Um, so there's there's great problems, great, great, great problems. And the world believes they have a fix 
And you must not fall into that. Any, any pastor, any church, any platform that separates any people by race or by color or denomination or, or nationality is evil. Whatever message they're putting out that, that, that does not unite people according to the Bible is evil and it's anti-Christ. We have problems, many problems. And to talk about these categories of problems is a good start because that's what they're saying. Oh, we need to talk to them. We need to listen. We need to hear. And that's, and again, it could be a good start, but I'm telling you, it's only surface. It's only surface issues that will never solve the problems. We might be able to counsel each other to get how other people think, but they are only issues of problems or issues of life. And we have issues that are surface in our jobs, in our families, in our relationships. We all have problems. Life pours problems out. It's part of it. But how strong an individual comes is when we realize to learn how to solve those problems actively and properly. Not according to what people say, but according to the word of God. What does the word of God say about it? And, and I think of Martin Luther King, who I heard that um, people, protesters came and blew up his house, blew it up. And they came to him and said, what are you going to do about this? Are you going to take this? Are you going to retaliate? Are you going to the streets with this? And Martin Luther King quietly with the Holy Spirit of God upon his life, said, I am going to pray for my enemies and I'm going to love those that persecute me. What, what a different look, a biblical look. So we have all these problems. But again, those are just surface. Those are just surface issues and problems. And those problems... Just talking and listening starts, it starts, and we need that, and, and, and we will open up godly counseling for people who want it, but that will never get to the root of really who people are and what is in their heart and where does this evil come from. So action is wonderful. If I deal with those, um, you know, surface problems, but how do I get to a deeper problem? Because it's the deeper problems where these things are seated in. Does that make sense? Are you with me? Yes. And if those areas aren't dealt with, you are just masking the problem just so you can go away. And stop talking about your problem. And where do we go there? Where do we go? Yeah. Turn. Let me let me show you a couple of things here. Turn to Galatians chapter five. We'll start there. And as I go into this, I want you to understand. We, besides surface problems, we have soulish issues. We have fleshly problems, all of us, because all have sinned. And to segregate a certain group is very wrong. And we have fleshly problems, deep, deep, deeper problems that are issues of the flesh, soulish issues. Romans chapter 7 talks about it, where I keep doing the things I don't want to do. Those are deep. Those are deeper than surface. Those are issues of the soul. 
And, and you know what? This just another thing. The Christian, once a person is born again and saved, they can enter into those areas. They can go into that arena and properly godly counsel. It doesn't mean you'll be accepted. You might be pushed back completely. But at least we have something to bring. Something that can get to the root of, pe of the problem. And the root is so much greater than the branch. It's so much greater than the little problems that are surface that the world is willing to talk about and discuss and say that we were wrong. But they never deal with the sin. And if we don't deal with the sin issue, the evil remains. And the Bible tells me evil will grow worse and worse. Incredible mm -hmm. thoughts. And the reason why we pray for our cities, our communities, our families, we must pray for people. We must reach out to them in the action of the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, to be genuine, to touch people's hearts, or you're in a losing battle. Society cannot deal with society, folks. It doesn't work. It never has. It's a reform, and it's a covering. But how do you deal with deep-seated wickedness and evil that's within all of man? <coughs> Isaiah said that the head is sick. We're sick-headed individuals. So in Galatians chapter 5, we get to learn a little bit about this. Just a little. Um, verse 17. And remember, as, as I read this, remember, the whole reading of this part of Galatians is to show that the Spirit can give victory over these areas. But read, listen to some of these. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. They are contrary to one another, which means they oppose each other. Completely opposition. A person that's walking in the flesh and a person that's walking in the spirit is on opposite spectrums. So you do not know the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. According to Paul, according to those who are born again, these things now become real and evident and open. When you what without Christ this was part of you and you and they weren't evident you didn't even know they existed you lived in them you lived for them which means you live for yourself and you live in your control in your domain but now it's different the works of the flesh are evident adultery fornication uncleanliness lewdness idolatry sorcery, which is witchcraft, hatred, hatred for one another, hatred for our fellow man, complete evil. This is the root of the flesh. This is the root of sin within one's life. Contention, jealousies, outbursts, wrath, selfish, and uh, 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 what is it? Ambitions. Ambitions, yes, dissensions, heresies, Envies, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the past, those who practice these things shall not see the kingdom of God. The flesh, the power of the flesh. So with the power of the flesh and the evilness of the flesh, the wickedness of the flesh, the flesh creates its own problems that affects the world. Now, an individual problem becomes a worldly problem. 
And then they want the world to solve it the way it fits them. Do you know that the new creation in 2 Corinthians 5.17 does not have problems? A person can. We, we're always going to go through problems. We're in the world. But the new creation doesn't have none of these problems because it doesn't see each other according to the way the world sees people. And this is why Paul over and over says, I do not look at people according to the flesh. I don't see any of that. Only the new creation looks at an individual that way and says, they are a child of God. They can be saved. They can be, I don't care what you did. You can be saved. You can be delivered, not through a system. A system can never save you. Only the word of God can save. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus Christ can Amen. save. Turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 3. <laughs> now, also, the Christian that has problems, because we, you will too. You're going to have a lot, some more than others. Some magnify those problems in their lives more than others. Some, the problem is greater because of, because of how they view that problem. How they view that problem magnifies a problem. You can feed a problem. You can make the problem greater. Romans 8, 26 and 27, it says the spirit helps with our weaknesses. Do you know the Holy Spirit is helping you with your weaknesses? Mm -hmm. They help you. With, and matter of fact, it says, if you continue reading, it says, and it also examines your own heart to bring these things to the surface so that the Holy Spirit can deal with it. Mm -hmm. Issues and problems, deep-rooted issues and problems. The Holy Spirit is the one that deals with these. Because it knows the mind of Christ. It knows the mind of Christ. Guys, with me online, I don't see one heart at all. Get away from the refrigerator. <laughs> Acts chapter 3. Um, in Acts chapter 3, this is the first miracle by one of the apostles after the death of Jesus Christ. And it's Peter and John heading into the temple. And they said it was around the third hour of the day, three or the ninth hour of the day, three o'clock in the afternoon. They're heading into the temple. And there is a man lame and he's begging. And this is where uh, Peter says, silver and gold, I have none, but what I do have, I give to you freely. Stand up, arise and walk. And the Bible says he jumped for joy that all those around knew who he was, realized that a miracle had taken place. So they fixed their eyes, not on Christ, not above, but on Peter and John. And now, at this point, comes John, uh, Peter's second sermon. First sermon was in Acts 2. Now this is sermon number 2. And he goes into preaching and he says, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant, Jesus Christ, that you killed. So now he's got an audience, and, and he puts the blame on them. The blame is now on them. And, he, and, and even he says, you were the ones who asked for a murder to be released. So they were there at that time. That's in verse 14. You granted him his freedom. The one who was guilty, you granted his freedom. The one who was innocent, you called for his death. And, and look how it says it in verse 15. He says, and you killed the prince of life whom God raised from the dead. And we are witnesses. He calls Jesus Christ here 
the prince of life. And that word in the original Greek means he is the author of all life. You, you killed where life comes from. The only one who gave life and, and who can give reborn again life, you killed. You killed the author and the prince of life. But God raised him from the dead. So, so now there's hope for you. And, and now he gives the gospel to the mob, to the crowd who, who killed the prince of life. And, and, and he says this in verse 19. Repent, therefore, and be converted. So here's the answer. This is the answer to the problems. This is the answer that brings people together as one. This is the answer that deals with sin. This is the answer that deals with our problems. This is the answer that deals with the deep root of sin within everybody's life. God does not look and separate people. We are children, and we can be children of God if we learn to repent and be converted. Great words in the original Greek. <laughs> repent is metanoia, and, and this means a change is coming. People believe repentance is something that I have to do. Oh, I have to stop this in my life. I have to stop that. And, and, and metanoia doesn't mean that at all. It means to, let me give you a different, it means to rethink, to rethink something and to reconsider. I'm going to rethink and reconsider. So when sin happens, it, in all of it, it starts with a thought. A thought comes in my mind, and what do I do with that thought? And when I feed that thought and act upon that thought, sin is now born. But it always starts with a thought. And once I sin, I commit sin, then the wages of that sin is death. Death, meaning not physical, yet spiritual separation from God. So now I'm going to rethink it. The thought still comes in and I'm going to, no, I'm not going to act upon this. I'm going to cast down that thought. I'm not going to give in to the temptation of that thought. I'm rethinking it. I'm not going to act no more. I'm going to give this to God. Ken is no longer alive. That temptation, Satan cannot tempt the new creation. He's dead. And it's no longer I that live, it's now Christ that lives within me in Galatians 2.20. So I'm rethinking it. And then I'm going to reconsider, wow, if I act on this, I'm, I'm sinning against this one and that one. I'm, I'm sinning. And I don't want to do that. So I'm rethinking and then I'm reconsidering. Then, so it's, that's metanoia. That's repentance. And then I'm going to repent and I'm going to, it says, and then convert, right? Repent, therefore, and be converted. Converted. <laughs> it's this next word. Converted means for me to turn. So I'm going to rethink, I'm going to rethink, I'm going to reconsider, and then I'm going to turn away. I'm turning away from that, but I got to turn on to something. I can't just turn on to nothing, because then my mind will go in other areas. So I turn unto God. I turn away from the sin, turn away from the temptation, turning unto God. That is full repentance and conversion. And it happens within the spirit. This is how one gets saved. 
I have, this is in salvation and this is also in my daily walk. So for them, it was on the salvation. Turn the way you thought and now start thinking with God. And now my mind is thinking in God. I understand. I, I, I reevaluate. I reconsider. I am a sinner. I need a savior. That's my repentance. And God does the work. Nothing that you had to do to clean things up before he could save you. He did it all. God. Repentance, mm -hmm. conversion. Why? Keep reading, 319. So that your sins may be blotted out. This blotting out is an, is, is an amazing thing also. It's a full pardon. Mm -hmm. You have now just been pardoned. Wow. Instead of judgment, here's your slip. You have been pardoned. God says you are free. Amen. Now yes. we have freedom. Yes. This is freedom yes. instead of slavery. We don't need to be a slave to the system. We don't need to be a slave to sin. We don't need to be a slave to the world system. I have been pardoned. The actual Greek word for blood means completely wiped out. There's not one part of my sin on my account now. Amen. I have been I have received righteousness. Yes. What? Yes. Me? Yeah. You're righteous. You are righteous and holy before God. The new creation doesn't dabble in problems. They're there, but I'm not going to let those problems affect me. I'm going to retrain my thinking. I'm going to start thinking differently. I'm not going to think with the world or the world's agenda. I'm going to think with God. You know, let me tell you something. What an opportunity to reach the lost because they're searching for answers. And, and they still have many, many fears, many fears within their lives, many fears. So we are converted. Now look at the last part of this. So repent, convert, your sins are blotted now so that the time of refreshing may come from the presence of God or the Lord. So we, we repent, we're converted, our sins are blotting out, and now, boy, does our cities need refreshing? Yes. Do we need a refreshing? Mm -hmm. Repent, con be converted, <coughs> understand that your sins are removed. This is as far as the east or the west. So a time of refreshing may come from the presence of God. The word means a, a revival is happening within me. I'm starting to be refreshed. Refreshing from the Lord is God breathing into my soul his freshness, his freshness. Dr. Carl Stevens um, uh, in Baltimore um, made a comment on this verse, this time of refreshing. It, the presence of the Lord is God is present, which, which means, and it's a time of visitation is how he put it. It's a, we are being visited by God. Our churches need to be visited by God. Our communities, our streets need to be visited by God. We need a visitation from God. This does not come this does not come through emotionalism. This uh, a time of visitation does not come for hyper spiritualism. This isn't being I am so spiritual God's going to visit me. You know I don't drum up. Come on, Lord, come on down. That's that's it's not an emotionalism. God doesn't need our emotionalism to visit us. He doesn't need hyper spirituality to visit us. He doesn't even need you to come to church, which I can't believe I say that, but, it, but he doesn't need anything to visit us. Yes. God can visit us. God can fall. His presence can fall right in our own homes. We need a visitation from God. 
has nothing to do with a good attitude. God's visiting me because I'm good. I've been good this week. I've been really good. I've been doing so good this week. I deserve this. You know, I've worked hard. I need this now, you know. But how about this? A lot of people think when they repent, they start going into this feeling sorry for themselves mode. They feel sorry for themselves because you they sinned. Don't you know you're a sinner? <laughs> well, you know, God has given you the amazing, precious promises of his book. And, and you're in a corner, a pity party for yourself. I mean, that's arrogance. Because that's defiling what God has freely given you by grace. You're saying that that grace is not enough, God. Because my sin is greater than what you've done. And you better go and crucify yourself again. Because it didn't pay for this, this guilt and this action that I'm living in. You, you're the God. But we need the presence of God. Yes. We need him to fall upon it in our hearts and in our lives. You know. So it's not from any of that. It's from repentance and conversion. And that's entering repentance and conversion to receive the presence of God is not entering into a place that we don't know about. It's not this little hidden place that happens only when we're, you know, we're, you know, it, that's like Gnosticism, that steps of wisdom that we obtain. So God's got to bless me now because I've achieved this level. It's not this secret place. This is a place that he's already given to you, but our little puny minds haven't caught up with it yet. This is what it means to grow. Growing in grace in 2 Peter 3.18 is realizing, understanding that God is going to pour his presence upon me today, now, in this moment. Yes. Why? Because I've got problems. Yes. I've got the issues of life that I'm, I'm battling in my mind, and, it, and they're winning. Surface. <laughs> Go to the root. Repent. Convert understand your sins are blotted out removed as far as the east is to the west and he remembers them no more Amen. Yes. believe it and deal with it and let's go on living for god we don't need to be preoccupied and isolated because of the problems because of issues hey our heart breaks for families show it through the love of God, not because you agree with the issue or not, because we're called to do it. We're called to love one another. People need the gospel. Amen. People, the world is falling. People need the gospel. Let me let me do one last thing, and we're we're done here today. Second Corinthians, chapter four. You know, the new creation, this new creation that doesn't, you know, struggle with any of these life's issues is, is you know, really, we need to learn to have a new, and I've been preaching the new creation since the beginning of this year, uh, but we need to have a new viewpoint on it. You know, we need to fully understand that souls are precious People are precious. Life is all that matters. Eternal life. Eternal life. What did I say? Boy, I love that better than Facebook. I just sit there. Second Corinthians, right? Four. Mm -hmm. Uh, pray for Sharon Desir. Um, she is so amazing. Yeah. 
Yes. Got a chance to speak to her, right? She is an amazing woman, and boy, she loves God. This is a uh, this this here this part um, as as it starts in verse eight is is the ministry of suffering, and to say a believer will never suffer. I mean. You got you got to be under a rock or or something. I mean, I could say some other things, but I got to watch the tongue here. But <laughs> but you know what? Here here's the thing. Here here's what it is. So we know. Does everybody here agree that we have life's has problems, yeah. and, and even more are thrown out than we expect? And remember another thing: these problems can arise at what any moment. And and escalate quickly, mm -hmm. quickly, to the point where you know, I, whatever. Um, <laughs> life is important. People's lives are important. We must have a love for people. We must have a love for people. Here's here's four problems right here. Four issues. Four issues of life. But look at it and just think about it a little bit. One of them is where the person is responding in the flesh. And boy, we can respond to problems. And, and we respond and people know. And then, there's, and then there's the new creation in the same problem. And, and just look at this a, a little bit. And this is a little, you know, this is this is different. This is really God uplifting the believer in their walk. But you know, one of them you could be saying, well, here's a human viewpoint or a fleshly view, and here's the spirit of God with the new creation. And, and just look at these, okay? Because our weaknesses and our problems in our flesh should never cripple us to the extent where we turn away from God. Because you know what? You're going to need him in the next problem. Read some of the Psalms and look how David cried out with all that he had. And, and some of the times David's major complaint is, where are you and why aren't you listening? This is King David. A man after God's heart. Feeling rejected. Feeling pushed aside. Feeling isolated. Feeling um, unworthy. How, feeling that nobody understands him. Ever feel that? You ever have that lonely projection come over you? That pitiful demonic uh, influence. Mm -hmm. But it is. It's, it's, not, it's not true is why I say that. It's, the feeling is real and, and true and a possibility. You know, Christians learn when they go through problems. The problem is, is when we sit in them and stay there in them. We're, you're going to have areas of doubt, you're going to have areas of unbelief. Your 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 heart is going to fail you. Again, if, if you're if you're more than superficial, the superficial Christian says, "Oh no, I can do all," I'm a, you know, and, and quotes all that, while while the same strong believer is going through difficulties that they've never experienced. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through great pain inwardly. And, and if you don't, then, then we need to talk more than talk and more than listening. And we want action, not just listening and understanding and, and, and talking and listening, but does that move us to being used by God? So let me wrap these up, these, these four 
Take your time, Pastor. Take your time. <laughs> no. Okay, so verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, we are hard pressed or troubled. This is a troubling. We are, we are troubled on every side. This is the flesh speaking. You know why we know that? Because the flesh recognizes it. I'm recognizing it in my flesh. Oh boy, this is trouble. Oh boy, this ain't good. You know, and, and, and it's there. You know, it's not that it's not there. It's real. This is real life teaching. This is biblical teaching. But remember, there's the other side to that problem. And the other side of that problem is the new creation that's going to handle it the way Jesus Christ would handle it. That lives within you, each and every one of you. So I'm hard-pressed on every side. Yet, here's the spirit side, not crushed. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's how God just said, yeah, you're, you're troubled. You're perplexed. You're not crushed, though. You know? Have you found my presence in this troubled on every side yet? Have you realized the, the, the presence, the divine visitation? I love that. A divine visitation. Have you found it? Number two, the second one. We are perplexed. This is, you know what perplexed is? It's, it's uncertainties that that I haven't figured out yet. Because we're we, we need to figure it out, right? We need to figure out our problems. Because if I figure out my problems, then I know where it came from and how to maybe deal with it the next time. Until a week later, I'm perplexed again. Uh -huh. Even worse, you know. And I'm calling. You don't know, but you don't understand what's going on with me. Perplexed. Flesh, spirit, but not despaired. You know what despair means? It means I'm not going to lose hope. I'm not going to lose heart because the word of God is greater than, than what I can't figure out or my uncertainties. And you know what? There are times that I've gone through different things and then the answers came years later of why. Mm -hmm. Every year when me and my wife went to convention, everything broke loose. And, and we started blaming ourselves of what's going on, what's in our lives, and why is God allowing this to happen? Three years later, it came to us. Oh, well, that's all you got? You know, I mean, just different attitude, different way, because I'm not going to lose hope because of a surface problem. You know what? I've got the body of Christ. You have people praying for you. You know, it's amazing to know that nobody will love you like, like the Christian. And, and you know what? In all problems... Problems bring fear, and fear uh, dispels faith. And, and, and when faith is, is attacked, genuine love is minimized. The love of God, perfect love, cast out. Perfect love, the love of the Son, cast out fear. So I don't lose hope. How about this? I don't, I don't lose confidence either. My confidence is in the creator. My confidence is in my deliverer. My confidence is not in this world or the world system. My confidence is, is, isn't in, in people in Washington making the decisions 
It's not our confidence. My confidence is in the Lord God, my Savior. Amen. Yes. The maker of what? Heaven, Heaven and all things. All things. I don't lose hope. So I'm, I, I, I could be uncertain, but I'm not going to lose confidence, hope. I'm not going to lose the words of the Bible. I'm not going to lose love. I'm not going to lose what God says about me. I'm not going to lose the foundation that I'm sitting upon. I'm not losing that. Amen. And you know what? Even if they take away all of our Bibles and burn them, that word is in your heart. Amen. That's not on tables of stone. Yes. He puts them on your heart. Yes. Okay, where are we at? Number nine. I'll just run through these. We're done. Okay. Uh, persecuted. The outside flesh says I'm persecuted. I'm being persecuted because of this, 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 this. Look what the inward man says. Look what the new creation says. But not forsaken. See, it might be true you are for persecuted. But God says he'll never leave you or forsake you. What is more important? You know, I, I think of Pastor uh, Silva in India, you know, in put in jail for long periods of time, completely persecuted until the amount that in jail came to like a hundred and some people got saved. God put him there to preach the gospel. He was persecuted, but God didn't leave him. We're not left in our situations alone. He is with us. And then struck down, struck down, but never destroyed. You know, we, they might strike down the flesh, but the new creation, the inner man within us, they can never destroy. How do you destroy eternity? This life is a vapor. Believe it or not, Cassandra's going to be 25 already pretty soon. <laughs> When's your birthday, girl? 19. Soon, right? 16. 16. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so just a, just a viewpoint to look at. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Mm -hmm. We thank you that we can stand upon the word of God. And it is more true and more real than circumstances of life that trouble us and take us down and pull us in all directions. Uneasiness of the world, direction that is uncertain. Is your direction uncertain? Even with all that's going on, do you have an uneasiness about where you're going? You know, you can have Christ today. You can accept Jesus Christ. Does that mean your problems go away? No, they probably just start then. But, but, he has you in his hands. He loves you. He died for you. Accept Christ today. It's a free gift of salvation. Believe in him for eternal life. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your amazing love. We just, we pray for the, united um, states, the place that's supposed to unite one another, accept people. Thank God he accepts you just the way you are. And we love you, Lord. We just praise you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Hey, uh, on Facebook, we just want to thank you for joining us and being with us. Continue to pray for us. Continue to pray for us. Get before God. Experience the presence of God. Uh, if you can give to the ministry, you can go to ggcmiami, ggcmiami.com. In the upper right-hand corner, there is a donate button. If God puts it on your heart, whatever that is, whatever it is, it's so much appreciated. Um, donate. Give to the ministry. Give to the work of God. 
Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. We love you in Jesus' name. Uh, for those that are want to go to uh, a wrap, um, um, I don't know if you put it up on Facebook. Okay. We, we sent it to those um, uh, on Zoom. If you want a link, I guess you can uh, text me or my wife and we'll get you out a link. And come on, let's let's talk about what we heard uh, if you have some time here today. If not, God bless you in your week and um, think of that new creation. Touching a life today, touching a person who is hurting, who is fearful, who needs God. Amen and amen. amen. Thank <laughs> you.